Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for um, taking the time out of your day to join the Access um, presentation um, featuring um, a focus on how operators can use real-time data um, more effectively. And in particular, I'm going to focus on procurement data and uh, supplier um, expenditure and how the, this data can be used for the benefit of procurement. ProcureWizard is part of the Access family. Um, Access are a well-established um, and well-regarded software company in the United Kingdom with a strong focus on hospitality. They have a number of products within the hospitality um, space, um, products such as Salima, um, which focuses on recruitment, um, payroll, and um, HR. Also, IBS, which is an EPOS solution with a cutting edge kitchen and video management and solution built into that. Design by Night, which um, covers um, table reservations, party management, pre orders, and is well regarded. Um, and Pronet, which is a cutting edge facility management tool which allows hospitality businesses to have a single point to control all. Um, call-outs and maintenance um, issues within the organization. And of course, um, Procure Wizard, which has a number of modules, including purchase to pay, food and beverage control, contract management, um, as well as nutrition analysis. <clears throat> Collectively, um, these products make up access hospitality. And our ambition is to give the operators in the United Kingdom a complete end-to-end -end solution where all of the, the partners um, fully integrate with each other to bring collectively additional value to the industry. We have seen many examples where by simply joining EPOS and kitchen management to purchase to pay or property management to food and beverage, collectively pulling all this together enhances the operator's experience, providing more time for your managers and staff to be out with your customers and less time maintaining multiple systems. Anyway, Access um, are proud to be hosting this webinar today. Data, people talk about big data and they talk about the importance of data. I think this quote from Carla um, brings together, I think, our view on data. And it's not just to collect data, but it's to take the information and turn it into insight. And we're all about insights. We're looking at how best we can use data, um, whether it be at a high level or how we can influence people's um, decision making abilities day to day. And I hope after showing you today what can be done with procurement data and how it can be gathered, that will give you a taste of the wider proposition within Access and how they move data across the multiple um, solutions that they offer. Procurers are aims to address one of the key um, problems with data, and that fundamentally is data source. For far too many um, years now, in order to maintain procurement database, either required a huge amount of effort maintaining catalogs from multiple suppliers, trying to manage uh, some sort of categorization structure that was flawed with difficulty, and at the same time, constantly trying to make sure that the arrival of new products, delists, substitutions, pack size changes, somehow were all gathered together. And if even if that could be achieved, the, it was almost impossible <clears throat> to compare data across multiple suppliers. Procure Wizard, set about trying to change the dynamics of that by ensuring that the source of the data from a procurement point of view always was from the supplier. To that effect, we decided that we needed a single point of truth. And in doing so, we created the supplier portal. The supplier portal connects Procure Wizard with currently over 4,000 UK hospitality suppliers. And those suppliers can attach their um, in-house um, catalogs directly to Procure Wizard, so that the supplier catalog and the customer's catalog are one of the same. 
the same connection can cover allergen data to ensure that it's a single point of truth. It can also cover prices. The objective was clear. We wanted to remove the need for the customer to have to maintain numerous catalogues on behalf of its suppliers. We wanted there to be a seamless transition between supplier data and that of the customer. Since its inception, we have now um, over 4,000 suppliers communicating on a daily basis with tens of thousands of products, giving one single point of truth. The supplier portal also allows suppliers to manage the entire relationship. So whether that be orders, deliveries, invoices, um, anything at all to do with that procurement relationship. But in particular, I'm interested um, today to talk about the supplier portal. One of the objectives, of course, with the supplier doing all the administration is that we need the customer to be in charge of the output. To this extent, although suppliers can be in charge of the data and that data is fed into the, your customer portal, any change, in this example, we have a fruit juice changing price <clears throat> for Silverstone um, Racecourse, and the system clearly shows there is a new product and the price is going um, down by 5.2%, and the customer has to physically approve that. Likewise, if there was any financial impact, i.e. this was going to um, impact on our profitability, it would also show there. So although we are talking about removing the burden of administration to gather quality data from the customer having to do the work, it doesn't mean that we lose any control. On the contrary, as well as having that ability to manage um, new products coming in and substitutions and delists, we also have the power to do an online item basis to dig deep. And in here, for example, you'll see at the very top, there's a little red arrow facing left. And this is us in real time identifying that the supplier who wants to load this item has not yet added the allergen information into the system. This is obviously an important red flag that stops the legal requirements of our customers being breached, i.e. being able to show a clear and concise track of allergen information from point of um, addition all the way through to recipe costing. Likewise, at the bottom, this is a new item. And you can see here there's a green tick, and again, that's outlining that the allergen information is present. So although procurers would encourage people um, to get the suppliers to do the administration, they absolutely empowers the customer to maintain total control of that relationship. So much so that we can dig into any particular change, and we can see every change that there's ever been, and the dates and the time, and we can also see if there's any alternative suppliers and what they're quoting for that product. Again, simply allowing the data to flow from the supplier to the customer does not mean there's any deterioration in the quality of the data. Data cut within the hospitality industry comes from multiple sources. I've picked two as an example. I've picked um, EDI, which is a way of invoice data flowing from the supplier seamlessly into procure wizards and from there into the customer's accounts package and removing 100% of, of human um, involvement. And I've also picked EPOS to show the power of connecting the EPOS with the purchases, with the sales, and how all that collectively can actually change um, and give people real-time information. From an invoicing point of view, on this particular screen I'm showing you, we're going through the tabs of the original purchase order is showing in green. Confirmation of what was delivered is in the red tab. And in particular, the EDI invoice is on this tab here. What this is doing is it's pulling the information straight from the supplier's accounts package. So what we have now done is we've tapped into the supplier's accounts package. So as they physically raise an invoice, it seamlessly appears in ProcureWizard, allowing us to do a three-way match, ensuring that every item that has been invoiced is, um, is at the agreed price. 
And for any reason, if the supplier had tried to um, charge you more than the agreed price, the system would automatically cross-reference the supplier price file and automatically put the invoice on stop. Again, it's good use of data because no humans are having to do this and it's a seamless process. Because the invoice is being checked, it does make it easy for us to seamlessly push this data into the finance package, again, removing any um, human intervention. We can do the same and we can take this information and we can push it into the stock system, again, removing the need for any shares of food and beverage managers or any stock controllers having to retype any data cutting down significantly on the human effort, and but also improving accuracy as well. We can see here that there's a screenshot showing the sales data flowing from the customer's EPOS system directly into ProcureWizard, and we are able to use that data to do two things. One is we're able to um, use it to deplete the stock, so without any, um, any um, human intervention again, we can deplete the stock on a real-time basis. But we can also look at the pattern to start looking at gross margin trends to help people identify what the profitability would be at any moment in time. Connecting data um, to give real-time snapshots into the business is the tools that's going to help the manager do a better job. And importantly, connecting data reduces the amount of time that users are having to input data, giving more time to be with the customers. Access are heavily focused on hospitality, and in particular, procurers are focused on hospitality and procurement. So our objective, and we understand that hospitality procurement needs to be controlled. So we understand that within the category food, for example, there's 98 subcategories, from bakery to bakery frozen, to bakery sweet, to bakery ingredients, to biscuits. And we understand, for example, within the category meat, that that is broken into bacon and beef and buffaloes and burgers. And we are painstaking in our approach to this. So across our entire supplier set, whenever a new supplier adds a product into ProcureWizard, that is categorized back to a master categorization across all of the ProcureWizard customers. The benefits that that brings to our customers are huge. They can report very complex purchasing spends they can drill into categories. They can compare prices across multiple suppliers without having to do any of the administration. We aim to provide quality data mapped back to a world-class category structure without the customer having to do any of the administration. A little bit further on, you'll see the benefits that this will bring. Although this is a big task, it's one that we take on willingly as we understand the value that that brings to our customers. We also dive not just into the, the, the category of the product, we also deep dive into the detail that sits within every product. So what the brand is, how the pack size is made up, what the unit of measure is, what the alternative products are to it. We will go to no ends to ensure that we get the right information because it's that quality of granular information that makes the data management possible. Mapping, we start using some of this um, information to be clever. So the, the screen I'm showing you this now is the dashboard of a typical user who's adding some items to the basket before sending it to the supplier. We can clearly see obviously the price and the pack size, but more importantly at the top of the screen, there's now we're now showing that individual what their gross margin target is for the month to date. We're showing them what they've got left to spend. We're giving them an exact countdown to stay within the budget. And we're doing this because we're integrating real-time price files with EPOS sales and stock, ensuring that hospitality professionals have the right information to stay within the budget at all times. And of course, it's not just staying within a budget, it's staying within a theoretical budget based on menu mix. And we'll talk about that a bit later on. The power of connecting data is actually ensuring that the managers and staff have the right information to make good choices at the time. We invest heavily in flash reporting, which takes data and displays it simply. In this example here on the left-hand side, 
I'm looking at a, um, a restaurant group and I'm simply collecting I'm asked for an update of the profitability across the entire restaurant organization as a snapshot in real time and it's delivered these results for these various units starting at um, it's 80 percent and the contribution to total group profit of four percent all the way down to 66 percent and again we're delivering these insights without any um, involvement as data is automatically flowing from one system to another if i was to drill in a little bit deeper into one of these it returns not just budgeted gross margin but it's returning theoretical gross margin it's returning supplier spend it's returning um, revenue achieved and again it's that power to pull all of these different sets of data together that's going to influence not just the outcome for the person placing the orders but also allow the person at head office to clearly see in week two or week three the position to enable them to have the power to change the course of direction before it's too late. So no longer are we looking back over our shoulder at last month. We're very much looking forward every week of every month. You know, as, as I was told, a, a good week's a good month and a good month's a good period. And if you get a good period, you get a good quarter and a good quarter can actually deliver a great year. And we're all about ensuring that our customers have that ability to look forward and not just over their shoulder. I'm going to do a little bit of digging this now into some supplier spend to show you how we're using that data to be able to drill down all the way from a top level into a recipe and as quickly and efficiently as you possibly can. As well as providing the on-screen report, we can also provide um, CSV exports um, that do a deep dive into the data. They do a deep dive into order frequency, at stock holding, percentage of spend. And of course, um, using data like this should enable our customers to avoid off-contract expenditure, and it should allow them with supplier negotiations, which will be the last screen that I'll show you. I've logged on this now as a, as a, into the Procure Wizard um, portal, and I'm logged on as a, as a demo um, administrator, so it's not live data. And I'm going to suppliers, and I'm interested in this, the analysis of the spend. I'm interested in the group called Butchers. This particular demo supplier has a number of, um, of restaurants that they trade with, and they have a number of butchers they buy from. And I'm interested to know how that spend has been managed. So I've selected a group called um, um, Group Butchers, and it's telling me that over the last six months, the split of revenue has been 135 orders to the Butcher Demo Meet and 46 orders to um, Butcher um, Demo. And I can see the average spend as well as the total net spend. I can see the spend by outlet, and I can see the pattern of spend by month. Importantly, I can also see that the category we're spending most money in is, um, is cooked meats followed by beef. And if I was to trail down a little bit further, I can see the number one product that we're spending our money on. If I was to dig into beef, very quickly will the system analyze the expenditure and it will show me the orders which contain beef. It will show me who's buying beef. It will show me the split between the two suppliers of the beef products. And importantly, it will also show me the individual products and what we're spending within that category. Now, the ability to go from a category like just to um, show me what's happening within the, the, the supplier category um, butcher, to be able to drill into two different butchers, to compare side by side the expenditure, to overlay the products of those different butchers into one simple and single reporting tool is very powerful. So if I was to click into one of these products, for example, um, beef bones, I'm all the way down to the product level now, and I can physically see the orders that contained that. I can physically see the spend over month. I can see if that product is used in any recipes, so you can see it's, um, it's in a beef stew. 
I can click into that and I can get the current price and I get the current gross margin and I can also see if there's any allergen data. I can see where it's currently stocked within the business and I could then look at both the allergen data that's associated and any nutritional information. The objective of our supplier analytics tool is to allow the customer to very quickly deep dive into any supplier all the way down to product level to an ingredient to an allergen. Now, why is that important? Two reasons, of course, is if you're looking at price changes, it's very quick. You can identify how that's going to impact on the recipes that's currently available. And if we had more time, I would do a deeper session on menu engineering and how um, having the data within menu engineering can actually impact on future profitability um, and also seasonal um, forecasts. I would, um, at this stage, um, like to ask Lee, um, who is a existing Procure Wizard and super user for Silvers and Racecourse, um, if he would be kind enough to answer um, a couple of questions as a, as a real user on our system and maybe give um, you the um, some some real um, insights into what our customers feel the benefits are um, and how they benefit from the data that we provide within the Access Hospitality Division and Procure Wizard. Now, I, I apologise, but you may know that Lee is at um, Silverstone um, Racecourse, and every now and again you might just hear a Formula One car whizzing past. So, um, <laughs> Lee, if I can... Okay, I think you're okay now, William. Yeah, thank you. Can I just ask, Liam, in, in terms of um, Procure Wizard and how, um, and, and you've now had it for um, a couple of years, can you tell me how that's changed, how you as a procurement um, director go about um, retendering and managing your suppliers? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a, a very useful tool for me, myself, and, and for our business. Um, I think probably one of the key things for me is being able to get that statistical data very quickly. Um, when I joined Silverstone, there was not a lot of information on past performance. So we've been able to build up a, you know, an easy access tool where we can actually get volume reports by supplier and by category very quickly, which of course helps in managing and being able to retender. Yeah. And have you found that um, the, the information within our, our system has helped you to control the expenditure for your users when having that sort of deep dive information to turn products on and off and turn categories and you know how has that impacted how you go about you know day-to-day -day business at, at, um, at the at the racetrack mm -hmm. well i think a good example would be um the non-food spend or consumable spend as i call it here um when i joined uh, the business was procuring quite decentrally um and we had about five different suppliers all supplying the same goods um, so at least bringing them onto a procure wizard means that I can control that spend through the mini market by the category. Um, I can easily check on compliance and how people are spending against their budgets. So for us, it's a big area that helps us. Okay. And one of the interesting things with procurers, which is slightly different, is how we force the the administration of the data back to the suppliers, whether that be catalogs or prices or um, or invoices. How have you found that that is a benefit to yourself? How, how has that impacted on yourself? Well, it was a big draw for me actually coming to Procure Wizard. Um, I've used uh, other um, software packages that have uh, the onus on the customer. Um, and of course, it means you've got to have the internal resource. So you either you have more, more than one version of the truth for your data or you've got administration uh, internally. Now, Silverstone, we, we run a, a very lean team um, for what we deliver. Um, we have 350,000 people here for the weekend of the British Grand Prix, but we only have about 120 permanent staff. Um, so actually having the, the it's a pivotal really to have a, a controlled supply base of having all the suppliers managing that data. But of course, as you alluded to, um, you still have that final control and I, I approve or, or disagree prove the uh, um, pricing changes that come through um, and control the allergens so yeah the, the final say is with us so it's, it's absolutely key for me that and obviously the proofs and the pudding you know would you say that having access to the quality data through the procurers or does has had an impact on, on your ability to negotiate better prices and and ultimately deliver improved profitability 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, old, old adage of knowledge is power is very true in this instance. Um, yeah, we we can use the uh, the flash reports to see what's selling well and what's giving us that margin. Um, we can, yeah, there's a good bit of market forces that can be introduced when we have a category and a chef comes to buy his peppers or something else from, and actually the system flags they're cheaper from a different supplier. So um, yeah, for for me, it uh, keeps them all on their toes and delivers that profitability we need. And in terms of, um, obviously, we're very much focused on procurers from a procurement point of view, but, you know, from a wider team, you know, having that, um, having access to data, how's that impacted on people like finance and, you know, other other departments? How have they embraced it? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, it definitely in our finance team, as well as our catering team, we can see um, champions and uh, people have really taken on to the system and reap the benefits from it. Um, from, from finance, being able to use the, the nominal code flexibly works very well. Um, we have quite a number of departments across retail and hospitality catering, and, and they all need to be budgeted and costed to various events. So that works very well for them. Um, and on the catering side, they're uh, big fans of the MDR module, and it gives them the ability to control their costs, create their menus, and of course we have a quite a large uh, selection of agency staff. So of course you can look at the Messi and Plus, and also got the you know how to create the dish. This is what it should look like, but it's all in a controlled fashion. So um, and added that with the allergen data and everything, we have a touch of a button for if any of our customers need it. Then um, yeah, there's a lot of benefits they take operationally as well. And in terms of um, this $100 question, is you know if um, you know, how would your job be now if you didn't have access to that data? You know, it, how would it change what you if you had to go back to what it was like before? Um, you know, how would your role be different from what it is now? Well, it's, it's uh, still uh, fresh in the mind, unfortunately, because it's what it was like when I started uh, two and a half years ago, but there was a, a lot of paper involved and a lot of dark cupboards we have to go to and pull things out and try and uh, get copies of and add to a spreadsheet and I mean the time it takes is just ridiculous so you just end up thinking do you know what I'm going to go for something else which is easier to get to and get some uh, value there so it just it puts everything within reach really in, in this area um, you know there's no area I can't really analyze quickly put out mm -hmm. the market if I should need to so um, yeah I, as I say I don't want to go back to that now. <laughs> okay well our 30 minutes are um, up Lee um, I'm not sure if any of the attendees um, would um, like to um, ask any questions. I think you can type questions into the into the there's like a question box, which I, I think if there is any, you can pop them in there, um, and I'd be happy to ask to answer them in the next minute or so. Okay, thank you. One of the sorry, the questions come in now saying how difficult was the transition for your suppliers to the new system? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, very easy. Um, what I tend to find is um, I go to a supplier and say, oh, um, I'd like you to go onto a platform called Procure Wizard. And they go, oh, yes, fine. We're already on that. Um, and that actually makes my job easier because um, then I've got access to people who already understand the system and the processes. So I think maybe 80% of the suppliers I approached were already on your platform. Um, the others um, were willing to go onto it because it's quite low entry cost for the supplier, which is good. And they see the benefits. It's open, opening them up to other suppliers that might use the platform so yeah very straightforward and lastly did you get any resistance from the the team who are you know who are hands-on um you know the chefs and things is another question that's came through yeah not not really to be honest with you i think uh, we were very lucky that actually we, we came from quite a low base which means that you know any any tool like this people really see the benefits to them um so therefore we haven't got people going oh well actually it was different to what i used to do it was pretty much a blank canvas in that area but pe people are very positive for the for the reasons i mentioned before on the the mdr the allergens and of course uh finance for seeing what uh spend analysis is there and, and myself because it, it enables me to do a, a, the job a procurement manager should be doing Brilliant. Well, that's our 30 minutes up, Lee. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, I'm hopeful that um, that I've given um, the people who have taken time out to dial in an insight into how connecting data from whether it be suppliers or, or EPOS or sales and collectively by putting it all together um, into something um, like Procure Wizard can ultimately completely change um, how you go about your day-to-day and deliver real financial benefits. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for your time. 
really appreciate it. There will be a copy of this um, available to download, I'm sure, um, if you'd like to share with your colleagues. And Lee, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you very much um, for taking the time out. It was good chatting with you and it was nice hearing the cars zooming by as well. No, thank you, William. Thank you to everyone at Procure Wizard. As I say, you've given us a fantastic tool to really improve our business with. So thank you. No problem. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.